Hey everybody, how's it going? We haven't seen you in a while. Man, from the uh, first time that we started baking and doing all this stuff, it was the beginning of the pandemic. Wow, that was a long time ago. We've been in our homes for about 200 years now. I uh, hope you're doing well, sincerely. I have to say it was really great watching everybody baking bread during the choir, as I like to call it. We've added a whole bunch of breaking bread podcast to the channel which you can see and I feel like now it's time to go back and start uh, expanding our knowledge of baking bread right today we're gonna start off with hala because it's the holidays it's Christmas time Santa Claus is coming, and uh, I say, you know what, Christians? Pump the brakes. Back off. You're going to get all the attention you need this month with your cookies and your weird Christmas fruit cakey breads and all the rest. You're taken care of. But my Jewish friends, holidays. <laughs> I have only made this holiday bread um, two or three times. And it's really fun, it's really easy. We don't have to use sourdough starter. We're just gonna use good old fashioned yeast and we're going to muddle through it. The good thing is if you mess this one up, it's probably gonna be while you're braiding it. If you do mess it up, you slice it, it's okay. The fails are really, it, it comes out a little dense. This is more like a brioche kind of a, kind of a bread. It's a little, a little stringy, a little light fluffy. If it becomes a little too dense, no big deal. You slice it, you make French toast out of it the next day. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really fun bread. People really enjoy seeing it, eating it. It's, uh, it's great. So let's get started. Okay, my friends, let's go. First, let's read off the ingredients. One and a half packages of active dry yeast or three and a half teaspoons. I keep my yeast in this jar, I get a big bump, big bulk of it, and you can keep it in the fridge for like a year. One tablespoon plus a half cup of sugar, that's because we're gonna use one tablespoon in the beginning, and then half a cup of sugar, half cup of vegetable oil, and more for greasing the bowl, five large eggs, four that are gonna go into the bread, and one that's gonna be used as a wash at the end to give it its nice little sheen one tablespoon of salt, eight to eight and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and then pop your sesame seeds for sprinkling at the end. We probably won't do it. I don't like the hollow with the seeds on it. So that's your ingredients. In a large bowl, we're gonna have to dissolve the yeast. Okay, so we're gonna take uh, one and three cups of lukewarm water. Wait a minute. Put a little water in our bowl. Our three and a half teaspoons of yeast. It's a lot of yeast. Whisk it around. When you're dissolving yeast, what do you always need, Maya, when you're dissolving yeast? Sugar. That's right, sugar. One tablespoon of sugar. I don't know why. Do, 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 Not that long a process. A lot shorter than three days making sourdough bread. Jewish people always have things figured out. The pressure though is I have so many Jewish friends and uh, I gave my challah bread to a couple Jewish families to see and uh, it's impossible because everybody's grandmother made it, uh, their delis made it. Uh, this is not going to be, these breads that we're gonna make now, Christians only. We're gonna fool those people. So there we go. So we've got our our big, uh, it's all dissolved. It's nice. It doesn't have to become super active at this point. It just has to dissolve. So now we're going to have to take our oil and we are going to whisk it in right now into this yeast. You do these things out of order and it just really ruins like the consistency. Now the eggs, one at a time. One at a time. Be patient. Do, 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 do. 
one egg, nice and light. So how you guys been? How's everything going? We're almost there. We're almost at the end of the pandemic. I can't believe it. I'm reading a lot of articles where they start by saying, now that the, now that we've reached the end of the pandemic, which is so great, the UK is already starting to put out their vaccine. People can get it next week. Amazing. So this is really it. We're really at the end. Man, weird, right? So be super careful. This is not when you want to get it. It was so funny watching everybody getting into baking bread during the quarantine. It became a very comforting thing, something that we already knew. And now everybody's gonna go back to living their busy lives. But you know what? The people I really love seeing showing up on social media and showing me their breads now. Those are the people who you know understand how great all of this baking is. All right, so now we have four eggs mixed into our yeast. It's all in there. Now we're going to add the remaining sugar. It's a half a cup of sugar. The last time it wasn't super sweet. A little salt, very little salt. Only one tablespoon of salt. All right, kids, we're gonna start adding some flour because we have the base now. We have this sweet, eggy, yeasty concoction. Now let's add some flour. Eight and a half cups. You're gonna do a little bit at a time. Let's do it this way. How about one cup at a time? This is so great you're here, Maya, because uh, you can keep track of how many cups we're using. All right, so eight, that's a lot, right, kids? Eight to eight and a half. How do you know if it's eight or eight and a half? The dough will let you know whether it needs more flour or not. One. Here comes number two, keeping track, Maya. All right, whisking in number two. I was thinking when we were gonna do this, should I wear an apron or not? And um, I was like, yeah, why, why not just have clothes that you can use as an apron? Like, I can just rub my hands on this. That's not a, you should have like your baking clothes. Like Jackson Pollock, you'd have your painting pants. We have our baking clothes. Number three, in. What cup is this, Maya? This will be four. All right. This makes two loaves. But you can make it in one pan. This is five. Holy Toledo. Ah, remember all our spoons. Remember all our spoons when I was way back teaching you my love of wooden spoons. It's so funny with the holidays coming up, people are asking, People keep asking, what do you want for Christmas? I want more spoons, more wooden baking things. I want a new cutting board. I want a cutting board. And everybody that I say this to, my wife, my children, my mom, they're all like, no, really, what do you want? Nothing would make me happier than a new cutting board. I got a good, rustic looking, not too heavy, not too light cutting board that we do all the cooking on. What do I want, a video game? What is this, six? Ooh, we're getting there. All right, this is getting heavy. Seven is next. Mm -hmm. This is starting to feel like, like we're working out and we're like, okay, we got one more mile to go. Here's another thing that makes this more difficult. This is seven, you said? Mm -hmm. The bread that we make, the sourdough that we've been making and stuff, that is all a uh, no-need situation. It's a no-need bread. You know, we just lift and fold and you don't have to knead it. This is old school. We're gonna be kneading this. All right. Get a little of that. Holla for the holidays. All right, well, you know we're at max because it's starting to come out a little. All right, let's get our hands in there. You know, there's always these little things that you pick up when you're making breads and you're getting good at anything, cooking, whatever. You start to learn these little tricks and the pincher method, 
of incorporating all the elements of a dough. Remember we talked way back in the early videos, the pincher method, and you're just using your little claws and you're getting it all to incorporate. Here we are. Now this is always at the stage where it's like, well, should I just add more water? Be patient. Now we're at the point where I'm starting to think, baking clothes is a dumb idea. You're coming out. Congratulations, Doe. You've left the bowl. A nice little tip. Time for Tommy's tips. Let it sit. The future us is gonna be so happy that we did that. Now you just wanna get a little bit of a rhythm going. Another little technique from our sourdough days. Letting the counter, it gives you a surface. It, it holds the dough. So as we start to pull on it like this, you see, it grabs and goes under and we're getting this goodness. That is pretty silky. See how it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a sheen to it. We'll go a little more, we'll smooth it out a little bit more, but it's getting that texture that you want. Gluten has formed. All right. Look at that. Beautiful. Now it's time for your time to complain. I am in the kitchen the most. I do the most, the most amount of things. I bake and cook and do all this other stuff. Everybody else kind of drives through real quick, eats something, throws their stuff everywhere. They don't clean and they move along, but this is my space. So I could yell and scream at them for leaving bowls, even when they know we're shooting, filled with quinoa. I could get angry at that. Or you know what? I could just clean it. Make a stink once in a while so they don't become horrible people out in the world. But the reality, the secret, don't get aggravated. Just it means something to you to have this incredibly clean space so you can roll in and feed your sourdough starter and do all your things, then just you do the cleaning. Don't tell them I said that. All right, we need a little more oil for the bowl just to get a little in our bowl. Take our beautiful dough. I'm so happy with this dough. This is really good. Uh, and then we're gonna put it in our little bowl. And then we are going to cover our bowl. So we're going to put this in its bowl. It's oiled. It's not going to stick. No emergency. And we are going to leave it and let it rise for an hour. It's going to be an hour. We're going to come back. It's going to be big and healthy. And then we're going to punch it down, let the air out, and let it rise again for a half an hour. All right, so we've waited an hour. And let's see how much it rose. Ooh, that's good. Look at that. This is, uh, you guys, I'm feeling really good about this. All right, so all we're gonna do is punch this down and let it rise again for a half an hour. All right, see you in a half hour. Beautiful. All right, we're back from another half an hour. And there we go. Let's come back pretty much all the way, looking good. And now we're gonna move into shaping the challah. Oh boy. Now, there's gonna be a lot of judgment, but there's no judgment that you can cast on me that I that is going to be more intense than my own. Make it into a log and you wanna put it into six balls. That coffee was good, wasn't it? I'm kinda wired right now. All right, so we've got six balls here. All right, so make them into strands. Just roll them out, the inside out. You know, you want to end up with pieces that are about 12 inches. That guy is stubborn and short. Short people are stubborn a lot of times. It's like we got this new pug. His name is Frank, and he's a bully. All right, we're not after perfection. We just want to do it, right? All right. We're gonna lightly grease our cookie sheet. 
Those look pretty good. There's one in the middle that doesn't look that great. Okay. Now, pinch them all together at the top. You take the outer one and go all the way across. And then you take the outer one and you go all the way across. Now, you're left with these two. These two are gonna be friends and these two are gonna be friends. And taking the top one, you bring this in close to these two. So you, from these three, you return it back to two by bringing this one over. All right, and now these two are friends, and now these two are friends. And then you bring this bad boy over to these two. And then you replace, and then you repeat. So then this outer one comes over to these two. This one goes over. And then this one comes over to these two. And this one goes over. And this is where it always gets a little weird because we've run out of stuff. That's pretty good. That's great. Right? That one's pretty good. That looks like a nice braid. And it's dough, so you can kind of pinch it together and do your things. And it's, it's, it's forgiving, you know. That's a nice little strandy strand. And then you take this and you put it over here on your little cookie sheet. And repeat. A little egg wash on this guy. Dun, 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 dun. We have successfully created a dough, braided the dough, and given it an egg wash. I'm gonna hit it again with the egg. This one has been sitting for a little bit, so we're gonna hit that one again, and then we'll get this little guy as well. So I'm happy with it so far. And now we let it sit for a final hour, the final proof. They'll get a little poofier, and, uh, and then we'll put them in. We'll egg wash them one more time, and then stick them in the oven. So we waited another hour, uh, but we did. And look at it now. Oh, there you go. If you want it to be light and airy, don't, don't skimp on the final proof. Final egg wash. This is the second egg wash. This is the new trick that we learned from the last time we made these. This is gonna really add to the shine. Sesame seeds, they're good, but I always question when I get bagels with sesame seeds, I'm like, is the flavor really worth there being sesame seeds around the house for the next six months? All right, kids, we did it. Here we are, look at these. Oh, that is nice. It's really nice. That is nice. Oh, this feels really good. I, I'm telling you, like you can tell that you're in a good space. The only thing we, that could screw this up is if uh, we burn them. But it's been at 375. It's gonna go in for 35 to 45 minutes and uh, we'll have holla. Happy holidays. Boo -doo -boo -boo -boo. All right, um, I'm going to admit, I've already peaked and it's ready. Ho, 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 come on. Look at that, look at that. Maya, this smells so good. This one is amazing. Holy cow, look at this, look at that. This one, we kind of, the braiding was a little weird, but this is what I was talking about before. So the braiding wasn't perfect. It's still a beauty, right? I mean, you can't really mess it up. Yes. Right? It smells so good in here. I don't know. Texture's perfect. It could be a hair sweeter. But that texture, that's really great. That it comes, breaks apart. That's what I didn't have last time. Oh, it's so good.